In New York, Fran Tarkenton also survived some early rough going, but you'll see later in the show how he guided the Giants to their third triumph. Former Minnesota Viking quarterback Fran Tarkenton is traded to the New York Giants in pro football's biggest deal. Giant coach Ali Sherman cites Tarkenton's ability, leadership, and experience. Ali appears quite pleased. Perhaps he's thinking of Tarkenton's talent for scrambling out of the passer's pocket to complete long throw. Or he may remember his fine play calling and ball handling during his six seasons with the Vikings. Tarkenton has ranked among the NFL's top ten passers since his All-American days at the University of Georgia. He's expected to be the Giants' answer to Joe Namath's colorful New York Jets quarterback. Fran Tarkenton, new life for the Giants who have known past glory. This is Stone Mountain in Atlanta, Georgia. And Atlanta is my home and where I come uh, during the offseason when I'm not playing football in the fall uh, for the New York Giants. Many people have asked me how I got started scrambling. Well, really, I think uh, it all started when I used to watch NFL football on television. And I used to watch the quarterbacks go back and throw from the pocket seven yards deep. And uh, if things were going right, they would throw the ball, get their completions, and usually their team would win. But if the rush uh, was getting by their offensive linemen or the receivers were being covered, uh, they just uh, would stay in the pocket and take the seven or eight yard loss. My philosophy has always been if uh, I have a rush and my linemen do break down occasionally, which all of them do break down sometime, then I will uh, try to get out of the pocket and move around and try to find an opening and, and a receiver downfield and still get something out of the play. Tarkenton has the uncanny ability to escape from sticky situations and complete a pass or pick up yardage on the ground. Every time he has the ball, he puts pressure on every defensive man on the field. Tarkenton, the Giants had a new bold offense, and a new spirit, and the big town had a new star, the Scrambler. We really didn't have a, a scramble offense, although people accused us of it. We never practiced the scramble, uh, because really we only use the scramble maybe three times a game on an average. Uh, many people don't believe this, because when they see films of me uh, playing football, they always see the films of, of me in a scramble situation. Uh, but actually, I would scramble uh, an average of three times a game and throw from the uh, a set position something uh, like 24 or 25 times a game. But it was a weapon for us, and sometimes it was effective, and sometimes, like anything, it, it wasn't as effective as we would have liked. Despite his unorthodox style, Tarkenton has all the credentials of a true pro quarterback. He is quick and smart, and he's adept at picking up floating receivers in a broken pattern. He ranks among the top 10 passers of all time. In 1967, he threw 29 touchdown passes, a figure topped only by Washington's Sonny Jurgensen. But what makes Tarkenton the favorite of the paying customers is the fact that with him in command, every play becomes a dangerous adventure. Of all the quarterbacks in pro football, he is probably the best, with a football tucked under his arm. Fortunately for Francis, and the Giants, 
He is durable and sturdy and always bounces back. Whenever I step on the football field, I'm susceptible to injury. Of course, when I run the ball, I still have the chance of, of injury, but no more so, I think, than doing any other part of my activities as a quarterback. When I run, I don't try to be a fullback because uh, of two reasons. I'm not tough enough, and I'm not big enough. But size and toughness did have a place in the giant offense. The straight-ahead power of fullback Ernie Coy added strength and stability to the freewheeling New York attack. Right from the opening home game, the Giants were a colorful and exciting team, one which drew over 450,000 people to Yankee Stadium. Some believe that it was the performance of Fran Tarkenton on this day against the New Orleans Saints that gave the Giants the extra incentive that stayed with them all year. Tarkenton did so many wonderful things, so many wonderful ways, that New York piled up 535 yards on offense and scored once in every quarter. Francis completed passes up and down the field. He connected on 18 of 28 attempts, most of which went to Aaron Thomas, number 88, and to Homer Jones. Midway through the fourth quarter, the Giants launched their final attack, the sort of wild, daring attack that would become their trademark for the rest of the season. Tarkenton took turns throwing and running and did both well enough to confuse the Saints and move the Giants to the New Orleans 11. Just three minutes to play, Francis passed to Bobby Crispino for the game-winning touchdown. From 63,000 critics, the opening show got rave reviews. Fran Tarkenton leads the league in touchdown passes. Homer Jones is second in scoring. It all adds up to a 14-7 giant lead. Early in the game, Tarkenton relied on revitalized Tucker Fredrickson, whose tough reception at the goal line was somehow not rewarded by a touchdown. On fourth and one, it looks like the Giants are stymied. But never count Mr. Tarkenton out. The scrambler converts disaster into a touchdown. A missed extra point makes it 24-20 as the Giants close the gap. The Giants passed for more touchdowns than any other team in the league. They averaged more than 26 points a game. At each time they called a play, it gained an average of six yards. Giant offense was predicated on unexpected maneuvers. Perhaps a quick go for broke touchdown pass. Or maybe a fourth down punt formation pass play. When the Giants were trailing the Pittsburgh Steelers with two minutes to play, Sherman used the old flea flicker triple reverse and it won the game. It worked because it was totally unexpected. Much of the team's new personality comes from number 10, Fran Tarkenton. In a highly publicized off-season trade, Tarkenton came to the Giants from the Minnesota Vikings. It proved to be the shrewdest trade of the year, for Francis brought along all the excitement and razzle-dazzle that had made him the talk of the league during his six seasons with Minnesota. His scrambling, gambling style added still another dimension to the New York attack. With Tarkenton at quarterback, a perfectly ordinary game of football, 
turned into a wild afternoon of fun and games. Homer's dominant characteristic is his speed, which once enabled him to run the 100-yard dash in 9.3 seconds, win a gold medal in a U.S.-Russian track meet, and once defeat Olympic champion Bob Hayes in national collegiate track competition. Nobody ever remembers seeing Homer Jones caught from behind with a football in his hand. In 1967, he scored more touchdowns than anyone, anywhere in the pro game. Possibly the most exciting victory came at the expense of the division champions, the Cleveland Browns. And Tarkenton ran 15 yards for another. But it was not running, but passing that accounted for most of the New York touchdowns. With tackles Willie Young and Charlie Harper giving Tarkenton fine protection, the Giants kept the ball in the air all day, and as the game progressed, it became apparent that Cleveland could find no effective measure to contain the Giant passing attack. With two Cleveland defenders covering Homer Jones on every passing situation, Fran turned his back on Homer and threw two touchdowns to Joe Morrison. When Morrison was covered, Aaron Thomas was not. And by the middle of the third period, New York led 35-17. Tarkenton, not daring to turn the ball back to Ryan again, led the Giants on a short march into Cleveland territory. After Coy and Fredrickson had softened the Green Bay midsection with strong running, Tarkenton passed over the Packers for two touchdowns and at the half the Giants led 14 to 10. They had the momentum and against most teams they would have gone on to win but in the second half Green Bay's defense lived up to its reputation. No team scored more touchdowns on the Packers than they did nor did any team move the ball better against the Super Bowl champs. After the Green Bay game the Giants went on to lead the league in touchdowns. And by the middle of November, the glitter and the glamour of Saturday night was far surpassed by the action and excitement of Sunday afternoons. Thousands came to see the football team. Fans came back to the rooftops to see and to cheer the most explosive offense in the NFL. On this Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles, they did not go away disappointed. Homer Jones scored New York's first touchdown on a two-yard pass. Then, two minutes later, he electrified the sellout crowd with a 63-yard catch and run for New York's second touchdown. The Giants went on to roll up 44 points, their highest total of the year. The season ended as it had begun, with Fran Tarkenton filling the air with football. Two of them landed in the hands of Aaron Thomas for touchdowns. Homer Jones picked off another and carried it 69 yards to the goal line. The Giants closed out the year with a smashing 37-14 victory over the Cardinals. It was an appropriate finish to a rewarding season. A season to look back on with pride and satisfaction. More important than the cold statistics of the one loss column was the fact that this was a team that would never stop fighting, never quit. In 1967, the New York Giants brought color and excitement to Sunday afternoons and offered victory to a town that loves a winner. Risk, 
Yankee Stadium, there were also last-second heroics. The ball handling was pretty evenly divided between Giant quarterback Fran Tarkenton and Saint quarterback Bill Kilmer. Tarkenton beat Kilmer in the passing department, but the Saint defense made his receivers pay for it. Each team managed only a field goal in the first quarter, but in the second quarter, both exploded. Running from the St. Rush, Tarkenton unloaded for 44 yards to Homer Jones, starting his first game at tight end. From the slot back position, Morrison flew downfield for a 50-yard touchdown. The Giants were up by one point. Two quarterbacks are the focus of attention in St. Louis for the Giants' Cardinals opener. One is number 10, Fran Tarkenton, New York's newly acquired field general. He completes this pass to Ernie Coy, who carries to the St. Louis 29. Tarkenton, who was held in check in the first half, arches a pass to Homer Jones that covers 38 yards. Look at that catch once more. On the very next play, Fran Tarkenton passes to Homer Jones, who eludes Larry Wilson en route to a 70-yard touchdown. It's 21-10, Giants. Shades of yesteryear as Tarkenton scrambles to the Big Red 39, where the third quarter ends. Tarkenton maintains the fast tempo into the final period with a 38-yard strike to Homer Jones. Notice how Jones literally drags Larry Wilson into the end zone. Tarkenton has turned it on in the second half. Fran leads the veteran Dell Schaffner perfectly for his third touchdown pass of the day. The timing on Schaffner's reception was simply perfect. The Giants were up by one point. Tucker Fredrickson took a six-yard pass in for a touchdown to put New York ahead by two points. In the second half, Alex Webster's team began to look like the Giants Webster once played for. First, Tarkenton threw to a receiver named Jones. Once again, from the viewpoint of the defensive backfield, 220 pounds of Goldwood bound energy. Tarkenton passed perfectly to number 85, Don Herman, a rookie from Waynesburg State College. And New York was behind by only six points with five minutes to play. Third down, 17 yards to go. The Giants' 51st consecutive sellout crowd awaited Alex Webster's decision. Then it happened, as only Fran Tarkenton could make it happen. A desperation scramble. A desperation heave. A desperation leap by two Giants and two Vikings. And suddenly there was the ball in the hands of tight end Butch Wilson at the Viking 10. 59 seconds to play. the game, Tarkenton scrambled around and around, leaving the bedazzled Redskins groping in desperation until his receivers had cleared and the passing lanes were open.
Parkinson himself accounted for a touchdown when he rolled around Washington's right side to give the Giants a commanding 24-7 margin just before halftime. In less than two years, Tarkenton has produced the flair, imagination, and excitement that New York fans not only relish, but demand. In the second half, New York extended its mastery over the Redskins. Homer Jones caught his second touchdown as the Giants amassed almost 400 yards in total offense and 48 points to thrash Washington. Tarkenton has always possessed an amazing gift for improvisation. But on Sunday, this talent rubbed off on some of his teammates. Early in the game, Tarkenton relied on revitalized Tucker Fredrickson, whose tough reception at the goal line was somehow not rewarded by a touchdown. Two third period touchdowns gave New York a 14 point advantage. The first came routinely on a rollout from Tarkenton to Fredrickson. The second resulted from a scramble as Tarkenton connected with Bob Tucker through a crease in the Redskins goal line defense. Tarkenton chose how the play action pass should be executed on this aerial to number 88, Aaron Thomas. With the Steelers double covering Homer Jones, Tarkenton again finds Thomas open and the Giants are moving. On fourth and one, Tarkenton fakes, sucks the defense in and leaves number 40, Joe Morrison, all alone and a 7-0 Giant lead. Tarkenton demonstrates to all that the Scrambler is the perfect nickname for number 10 as he scurries to the one. The Steelers are now covering Homer Jones one-on-one -on -one, and that means one thing. Get the ball in the air and Jones will be there. However, the touchdown is nullified. Fran and Homer will have to do it over again. Jones gets 20 yards and a down and out pattern as the third quarter ends. And 20 more on this slant end as the fourth quarter begins. Fourth and one, it looks like the Giants are stymied. But never count Mr. Tarkenton out. The scrambler converts disaster into a touchdown. A missed extra point makes it 24-20 as the Giants close the gap. It's a triple reverse, leaving Joe Morrison all alone again, this time to score the winning touchdown. Giants stage a thrilling fourth quarter comeback and are now tied for first in the century division. They also caught Bob Tucker in full stride within the crease of the St. Louis zone. Tucker smartly exited stage left, but should have kept right on running because the Cardinals' old hand Larry Wilson, number eight, never allowed Fran to turn another trick. His 89-yard return of Meredith's misdirected pass set the stage for the league's number three passer, Fran Tarkenton. Joe Morrison, number 40, used all 10 years of his pro experience in making the catch for the touchdown. Example, third and 18 from the Dallas 22. Everything seemed to go right for the Giants. 
This day belonged to Tarkenton and the underdog Giants with their own superheroes like number 45, Homer Jones. Tarkenton worked the screen pass with number 40, Joe Morrison, carrying down to the 25. Five plays later, the Giants were on the two. Screening out Jim Nettles, number 45, Homer Jones, takes a quick look in, and it's 7-0, Giants. After the field goal, the Giants got the ball again, and this time all they needed was one play, Tarkenton to Jones. Homer zigged and zagged his way to his second touchdown and a 17-0 giant margin. Their defense completely squelching the Eagles, the Giants had the ball once more. Aaron Thomas made an over-the-shoulder reception as the first quarter ended. The scrambler lived up to his billing on this piece of improvisation to Ernie Coy, which ended on the Eagle Four. But the Giants were not through scoring by any means. Tarkenton strike to number 89, Bob Crispino, helped set up their fourth touchdown of the half. New York's deep receivers had been getting by the Eagle secondary almost at will. Aaron Thomas ran a simple straight-out pattern, beat Nate Ramsey to the ball, and it was 31-7 as the troubled Joe Q. Herrick looks on. The Giants got the ball once more in the half, and not to spoil their record of scoring every time they had the ball, they did it again. Big, strong receivers are a must in the NFL. Aaron Thomas is one of them. Rogalak's third field goal put the score at 37-7. The Eagles had at least one fan in New York to console them, and he did. Never before have cheers rung out in Minnesota when Fran Tarkenton was dumped. Mr. Tarkenton has moved on to New York, but he took his scrambling exploits with him. Tarkenton and Homer Jones have become well acquainted in New York. 66-yard pass and run plays like this demonstrate their familiarity. Giants seven, Vikings nothing. Fran Tarkenton leads the league in touchdown passes. Homer Jones is second in scoring. It all adds up to a 14-7 Giant lead. The Giants threaten to make a rout of the game in the second quarter. Tarkenton bedeviled his former teammates with a style he made famous in Minnesota. Lightning struck early in the third period. A 31-yard slant into Homer Jones gave him the opportunity to demonstrate not only his speed, but also his strength. Next, off the play action, Tarkenton finds number 88, Aaron Thomas, unattended. Thomas runs over two defenders on his way to a 48-yard touchdown and a 24-7 giant lead. And in the third quarter, Fram, staying in the air, found Joe Morrison, number 40, and Morrison went all the way for a 68-yard touchdown. Morrison's second longest scoring play ever tied the score. This Tarkenton rollout flip is good for a first quarter, 7-0 lead. Giant partisans have enjoyed the frantic scrambles of their man Fran all year. He didn't let them down today. Tarkenton can rifle the ball, too. This time, he chooses the Giants' leading receiver, Aaron Thomas. 
Next, it's veteran Joe Morrison to the two. If the Giants are to finish the 67 season at an even 500, they must do it with more points. The explosive Cardinal offense can't remain dormant. Fran and Homer must have discussed that point because it was fireworks from the Giants' first possession in the third quarter. Homer Jones was voted the Giants' offensive most valuable player award prior to the game. Is there any doubt? Everyone is back to block except Aaron Thomas. He's beaten his man and is in the clear to receive Tarkenton's strike at the goal. Giants 30, Cardinals nothing. <laughs> Allie Sherman and his George and Peach have something up their sleeves. It's a play the Giants don't have opportunity to use often, thank goodness. But it works. The Giants have a playbook they use, too. Tarkenton to Thomas is the first chapter. Both have done their homework well. Make it 37-7. And Fran Tarkenton will be looking to next year with confidence. On the very next play, Fran Tarkenton passes to Homer Jones, who eludes Larry Wilson en route to a 70-yard touchdown. It's 21 to 10, Giants. On the very next play from scrimmage, Tarkenton connected with the bomb. A 73-yard pass to Homer Jones. This was Homer's seventh touchdown of the season and tied the game. Trailing 7 to nothing, it was up to the Giant passing attack to rebound from the Packers' opening blow. Number 24, Tucker Fredrickson, was first to put the Giants on the board. But number 84, reserve Rich Houston, was the man who stole the show. With regular receivers Bob Tucker and Don Herman hobbled by injuries, Houston took up the slack, hauling in six passes for 151 yards and scoring three touchdowns, one an 80-yarder. Houston's performance was typical of the spirit provided by Giant Reserves in 1971. Often key performers were chopped down by injuries, but Reserves stepped in and did exceptional jobs. The Redskins secondary proved to be a great water fountain where Fran Tarkenton and his receivers could slake their thirsts at will. In two previous games, Jones had caught only three passes, but today he grabbed six for 179 yards and two touchdowns, the first covering 82 yards. Fran Tarkenton, number 10, had his most productive day, passing for 326 yards in the battle of the run versus the bomb. Tarkenton came back through the air with a pass that would have tied the game, but Tucker Fredrickson's knee touched the ground and the touchdown was nullified. Pete Gogolak's field goal attempt from the 45 was partially blocked and the Cardinals got the ball. Shades of yesteryear as Tarkenton scrambles to the Big Red 39 where the third quarter ends. Tarkenton maintains the fast tempo into the final period with a 38-yard strike to Homer Jones.
Notice how Jones literally drags Larry Wilson into the end zone. Tarkenton has turned it on in the second half. Fran leads the veteran Dell Schaffner perfectly for his third touchdown pass of the day. The timing on Schaffner's reception was simply perfect. In Green Bay, there was a surprise party for New York's Alex Webster and new Packer coach Dan Devine. Surprise Sunday got underway early in the first quarter when Green Bay's Ken Ellis, number 48, gathered in a New York field goal attempt and galloped 100 yards to a touchdown. Under a new rule, missed field goal attempts can be returned, and Ellis' run showed that the rule change will add new excitement to the NFL in 1971. Many people expected New York to crumble beneath the Packers' opening fire, since the Giants had lost all six of their preseason games, but a Fran Tarkenton to Rich Houston touchdown pass showed the Giants weren't going to wilt. Houston and Tarkenton combined for three touchdowns to put New York ahead. Houston, a third-year pro from East Texas State, overcame pass interference by the Packers to make the 39-yard touchdown grab. In the second half, the Giants continued their unbelievable explosion as Tarkenton hit number 24, Tucker Fredrickson, for another score. During the preseason, the Giants had been anything but impressive, but it appeared that opening day awakened them. The Giants' 9-5 record was due in large part to a short-up defense and was an omen of things to come. The tough man-against-man -man battles in the NFL would claim many victims. Having recovered from an injury, number 38 Bob Tucker was back in the Giants' lineup and showed just how valuable he is to the New York attack. During the first part of the season, the Giants' passing game was devastating, and two outstanding performers were Tucker and 84 Rich Houston. New York racked up 21 points and then staved off a last-minute Cardinal rally to emerge with victory number two. Through the first part of the game, the big guns were rarely heard from, as field goals accounted for the scoring. A 36-yard bomb to Rich Houston highlighted a second-quarter New York drive that ended in a game-tying field goal by Pete Gogolak. Late in the fourth quarter, number 10, Fran Tarkenton led a precision passing drive that resulted in a final New York touchdown. The Giants' march came to an end when Tarkenton found Clifton McNeil for a final touchdown to make the score Dallas 20, New York 13. A bruised and battered New York team that had limped into Dallas hoping for an upset departed with a narrow loss and the confidence that they could match weapons with any opponent. The Giants' losing streak continued as they fell to Baltimore. the San Diego Chargers, the newcomers ran wild. The aggressive play of Charlie Evans, number 31, had become a welcome addition to the giant offense. And the, the aggressive play of Charlie Evans, number 31, had become a welcome addition to the giant offense. And the powerful rookie bullied and blast complimented by the receiving of another obscure draft choice. 17th round pick, Coleman Zeno, number 88. When an injury forced Rich Houston out of the lineup, Zeno stepped in and his 9-5 speed and sure hands add excitement to the giant attack. The New York passing game led by number 38, Bob Tucker, was red hot and rolling. With 34 seconds remaining in the game, Fran Tarkenton danced into the end zone to put the lid on victory number four by a score of 21-17.
The passing game had led the Giants back to the winner's circle, and the key figure was Bob Tucker, who led the NFC in receiving despite missing two complete games. Tucker came to the Giants as a free agent, but his sure hands and elusive feet brought stardom and made him the first tight end ever to win the receiving crown. Another exceptional pass catcher is number 85, Don Herman, a daring wide receiver who'll go anywhere to grab a football. A big surprise in 1971 was Rich Houston, a graceful and swift wide receiver who made many big plays in 71. Tucker Fredrickson, a versatile performer who combines a blacksmith's raw strength with a surgeon's sure hands. In snowy Pittsburgh, it looked like the Giants would capture victory number five as New York's passing game froze out the Steelers. circus catch by Rich Houston. Whether he plays as a runner or as a receiver, Morrison's performance bears the same trademarks. Total effort, dedication, a refusal to give up. Joe Morrison is a living symbol of the giant tradition, a bridge between the glory years of the 60s and the hope for the future. For a team's legend grows not from one year's record, but from a spirit that endures and grows from year to year. The spirit of the New York Giants. Once again, the Giants' offense was led by quarterback Fran Tarkenton. And although Fran occasionally came up with a surprise, one thing remained constant. No pressure bent him. He performed with coolness, controlled audacity, Broken plays were turned into solid gains. Mistakes were shrugged away. Recovery was smooth. Ice water flowed where there should have been blood. Fran Tarkenton, a little older, a little wiser, sometimes a little more cautious. But still, Fran the scrambler, the gutty gambler. Fran has learned that while the safety of a scrambler is not guaranteed, pain is. From the wisdom of experience, he's found ways to avoid the pain. Get the first down and drop out. Get 10 and get down. A good gain in submarine. And if it's not always easy to find a safe haven, persistence will out. And the scrambler will survive to run again. As the NFC's third leading passer, Fran had help from his great new receivers, number 18, Clifton McNeil, and number 38, Bob Tucker. Don Herman, in his second year, was still leaping and showing good hands. Number 84, Dick Houston, had the speed to get open and the speed to go.
But star status was reserved for quarterback Fran Tarkenton, who shredded one of the most expert deep defenses in football. In their first meeting, Fran wisely used tight end Bob Tucker, number 38, to molest the middle of the St. Louis secondary. Once again, Tucker's crossing patterns confused St. Louis, and he scored the first giant touchdown. Tarkenton's uncanny ability to scramble free from trouble often cooled down the Cardinals' rush, and the artful Dodger showed that he still retained his gift for improvisation. His knack for the ad-lib play is filtered down to his teammates as a Tucker lateral to number 85, Don Herman, resulted in a second giant score. Another deft bit of deception by Tarkenton had St. Louis converging into the middle while Fran scampered untouched into the Cardinal end zone. Tarkenton capped his most important and satisfying day by connecting with setback Ron Johnson for the six points that completely put the game out of reach. Then the fun began. Two former New York Giants got together for a reunion in Yankee Stadium as Alex Webster's Giants met smiling Tom Landry's Cowboys. The Giants have had a difficult year, and they could manage only one offensive touchdown against the rugged Cowboys as number 10, Fran Tarkenton, connected with number 85, Don Herman. Cool hand Fran sent it back in motion, and when free safety Ray Brown, number 34, reacted with him, the peach quickly improvised. Some of the Falcons were put off by Fran's ingenuity, which should make the next chapter of the New York-Atlanta feud even more interesting. But for now at least, the Giants had the game ball, a come-from-behind 21-17 victory, and the last laugh. 